leading the league in home runs, average, and RBIs right now. Bet on himself. Yeah, he bet on himself. He pulled the uh, baseball version of Joe Flacco. Look how polite all the Canadian fans were, because I do think that that ball got into the stands and somebody caught it in their glove. There was no big scrum. There was no fist fight. Look at how polite it looked over that wall up there. Um, my one thing on this, I mean, good for Hey, Judge. if it was a hockey puck, though. Well, finally, you know, I was going to say, finally a guy number 99 in Canada did something great in sports. That's a nice first. Yeah. Um, no, but in all seriousness, I mean, good for Judge. I mean, he seems to do this without any PED cloud whatsoever, although... I think there's cause to wonder about, at least in his and Albert Pujols' chase especially, if Major League Baseball might have <clears throat> introduced some livelier baseballs, especially with Pujols into the proceedings of late for his chase for 700. Uh, I think what's, what's interesting, though, Richie, and I don't mean to be a wet blanket here, and I saw this take on Twitter from a bunch of different baseball writers. It's funny how baseball has mobilized everybody they can find to talk about how big of a deal it is that the American League home run record is about to be broken with his next home run, and now he's tied it, as if baseball really doesn't want to acknowledge any of those other guys that you just mentioned, McGuire, Sosa, Bonds, and their accomplishments, because they somehow feel like that's shameful, despite being the sport that looked the other way happily, particularly during the 98 home run chase. I just think that's hypocritical on the part of the sport that has long sort of doctored the rules of play or the, the actual things that the game is played with to sort of suit its own aims. Good point. Let's go out to Nick and Bell Vernon. How you doing, Nick? Hi, Rich. Hey. hey, just a quick comment here. Someone needs to tell the Steelers that they're doing a terrible job of adjusting at halftime to the other team. Uh, most of our points are coming in the first half with very few points in the second half. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, a, that's a trend. Well, they can't score in the first quarter. That's something. What is that, uh, 11 straight first quarters they haven't scored while the Bills have scored on eight straight game-opening drives? <laughs> yeah. The Detroit Lions, I want to say, until the fourth quarter of that Vikings game, they had a streak of touchdowns in 17 straight quarters. The Lions, who stink, or who yeah. traditionally stink. Uh, I, I Chase think Claypool actually said when I was interviewing him after the game, he said that he basically called out the adjustments. They made better adjustments than we did. Well, the opening game scripts are bad, and then, yeah, they, they get out-adjusted oftentimes on both sides of the ball at halftime. I think at least with the offense, you just wonder, is the talent there? And then with the defense, I wonder how much of its stubbornness on Mike Tomlin's part. Hey, I have a good game plan. If you guys execute it, we don't need to make adjustments. I don't think they go in there and just twiddle their thumbs for 10 or 15 minutes. But I do think on the offensive side especially, they've got to do more tweaking because what they do is so derivative. What they do is so predictable, I think it becomes much easier to stop once you've seen it for a half. Deontay Johnson did say to me today that he's getting separation. He's getting open out there. All right, let's go out to Bill in Mount Lebanon. How you doing, Bill? Bill, you there? Bill. I think the Shills is short Kenny Pickett on Sunday against the Jets because Tavisky's not doing nothing. What have they got to lose? Maybe he'll win the game for him and he'll become a hero. You know what? I think that's everyone's theory right now. Like, just what do you got to lose? I mean, look, if they get to two and two, I'm not saying that they're going to do anything in the playoffs, but they can still compete for, a, you know, maybe a division championship here. It's not out of the realm. Of, really? Look, no, I'm, I'm not being realistic, but I'm saying that mathematically, they're kind of still. Okay, in well, it. yes, mathematically, yes. they're in it. We've seen three games played. There has been absolutely nothing to suggest in those three games that this team is A, division title material, B, playoff material, C, anything but basement material. They're the only team in the AFC North with a negative point differential. They are averaging like 18 points a game through three. If you've looked at the Ravens, Lamar Jackson looks like the early MVP favorite to win his second. Burrow, I think you can assume, is going to start getting back on track. And you know, you know what the Browns' biggest problem might be if they are able to uh, continue kind of doing to teams what they did to the Steelers and that Jets loss looks more and more like a late aberration? Dead serious here, Richie. The Cleveland Browns' biggest problem might be, are we going to be too good when Deshaun Watson's eligible to play again to go back to him? Like, seriously, if you were them and you were 8-3 and three without the guy, I think you'd have to seriously consider just telling him to cool his heels for the rest of the year. Yeah, but there's no way they can do that. They That's could. <laughs> they could. They could. But it would be the gutsy right. If they yeah. were that good, it would be the right and gutsy decision at that juncture. All right, let's go out to Mr. Wise in Ohio. Oil City, how you doing? Mr. Wise. Yeah. Hey. 
Well, uh, the only way the Steelers are going to get anything done is Tomlin and the offensive coordinators got to go. Oh, Mr. Wise. Mr. Wise, can next time Wise you call, can you be Mr. Turn Down Your Radio or Television, please? <laughs> could be. Um, look, I know everyone's calling for, I mean, look, Mike Tomlin would have a job in 10 seconds if he lost his job here. He's Pittsburgh. not going to lose his job no. here, though. I do. He's I do think, sick. though, there's a there's a healthy like middle ground between I want to fire Mike Tomlin six years ago, which is the opinion it seems of like half the people who call this or any radio show, and Mike Tomlin should start taking some heat for an overly conservative approach, for a stubborn approach when it comes it seems to hiring offensive assistants, and for trying to live in like 2000 NFL where you can win with defense in a running game. I do think there is legitimate and considerable room to criticize the way he has so far handled this season, but most people just say they should have fired him, I don't know, after they didn't win a Super Bowl in all three of his first years, uh, it, whatever. He has, let, let's be fair though, Richie, since their last Super Bowl appearance, how many playoff wins? You only need one hand to count them, three. Three for the standard is the standard franchise. That ain't good enough, that ain't up to standard. No, did, do you think there's some thought that he thought the defense was better than it was? I, well, I think they are when T.J. Watt's healthy. I just think he was giving them virtually no margin for error. Like, if one thing happened on that defense, look what was going to happen. And then I think the fact that they all put all their eggs in this Trubisky basket without knowing a ton about him when they signed him and just saying, oh, we like the, the basic package of skills, I thought that was kind of derelict of duty. You, you didn't see... I mean, you paid Mitch Trubisky like you knew exactly what he was in Chicago. Why did you think that you could suddenly recreate the formula that really only worked well there one time? All right, uh, we got to take a break now. Back to wrap up the show. Coming up next. <laughs> 